Well, we got a mini update today, one that was expected based off of um, everything that Gerald has been telling us over the last couple of weeks, but it is officially, reportedly official anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh, Damian Lee returns to the Phoenix Suns on a veteran minimum deal. It is a one-year deal, I believe, is what we're hearing. Yeah, one-year deal. I did get confirmation it is a vet minimum, so it's about $2.8 million since he has seven years of NBA experience, which is roughly the exact same as he would have had if he had opted in there. Um, so that's kind of interesting that it wound up being for the same exact is, amount. But is why there would a tax yeah. issue? So he's change? he is coming back at a lower cap hit. Yes. So it's $2.1 million, so that does do the Suns a favor in that respect. It's that little nugget Bobby Marks told us. Basically, yeah. have your guys opt out, come back. Save a little bit of money on the backside of things for that. That's yeah. the Matt Tellum effect, right? He's like, here's the little <laughs> thing we could do yeah. to stick it to the second apron. Well, be. I mean, listen. Mm -hmm. 700 you grand. A dollar, yo, you can 700 save a dollar. Grand. Why yeah. not? You know what I mean? Listen, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, in case you guys forgot, a quick little reminder about what Damian Lee brings to the table. We'll look at his stats from the 2022-23 season. So he played 74 games that season. He averaged 20.4 minutes per game. He knocked down 8.2 points, got three rebounds, dished out 1.3 assists, and shot 42.2, I'm sorry, 44.2% from the field and 44.5% from deep on 3.3 attempts per game. Mm -hmm. Not too shabby. No. I mean, he was he was third in the league in three-point percentage that year, uh, shot 47% on catch-and-shoot threes, I think 51% from the corners, and 52% in fourth quarters. So, like, this is a guy that you could rely on in big crunch time scenarios. He had that game winner against the Mavs in his very first game with the Suns that we all remember. Um, I think if he can come back healthy, he's going to provide more of a jolt than maybe people are realizing, especially if you look at the bench and how many non-shooters that group has. Having a guy like Damian Lee coming back is is going to be big. Yeah, I love this for Damian. I love this for the Suns. I've always been a big fan of Damian. I mean, listen, you, you're shooting 44% on three attempts, G. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not something to, to just write off. Like, this guy's a shooter. He'll let it go. He's not afraid to let it go. Great locker room guy. Great vibe guy. Um, I'm happy he's healthy. I mean, I'm he, he's fine. I, I, I'm praying that he stays healthy and he gets on the court because – there were people that were worried about the Eric Gordon departure. Mm -hmm. And and I kept saying, you know, if D. Lee comes back, uh, you might have your replacement in-house um, and has the ability to probably shoot it equal to or better than. So I, I love this for D. Lee. Better than at this point. I mean, I, I saw an interesting stat today uh, to put into perspective Damian Lee and his ability to shoot. The top 10 three-point percentage seasons in Suns history mm – -hmm. D. Lee second. Ooh. Grayson Allen, D. Lee, <laughs> then also appearing on the list, Bradley Beal and Kevin Durant. So you've got four of the top ten <laughs> uh, three-point shooter <laughs> seasons, uh, you know, guys that accomplish that all on the same roster. And your hope is, okay, these guys are going to get more, or more attempts this year under Mike Budenholzer. So you have a guy like Damian Lee that then you can turn to, Monte Morris, who uh, you know I didn't get a chance to talk about yesterday, but uh, he's also – a good three-point shooter, all of a sudden, you okay, I can see where this roster might actually start connecting on more of these and get a little bit more into today's NBA rather than where they were last year. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be really good, like you said, for that second unit that doesn't have a ton of shooters and then losing what EG brought as far as at least attempts per game mm -hmm. uh, from the three-point line. And I think it'll also help his teammates um, – from that unit as well to kind of take a little bit of pressure off of them from having to make up some of those attempts mm -hmm. per game. So I don't know. I'm excited to have D Lee back. I know book likes him too, mm -hmm. which is always a positive. You get some good locker room vibes from there because Damian Lee didn't get to be with the team as much last year. I think towards the end of the season, he was traveling a little bit more, but for the most part, he was at home rehabbing. Right. You know? So have you heard anything as far as his injury goes? I haven't, but he was getting closer near the end of the season. You know, we, we mm -hmm. never got to see him because obviously throwing him back in the playoff situation, he just wasn't ready for that yet. Um, but I would imagine with a full off season, as long as there have been no setbacks, which we haven't heard anything about, uh, he should be ready to go by the start of next season. But he, he was saying like it was a nasty uh, meniscus tear it in was. terms of like basically being ripped off the bone. <laughs> so, yeah. Ow. It was yeah. worse than I think they thought it was initially, yes. right? Or at yeah. least what was being shared publicly. Right. It was worse than that.